Hey, good morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. So I've been playing with Packet Radio now for almost four months and primarily try to build a community over Packet Radio by hosting a bulletin board system. Yeah, that video is still coming. And I've been trying to find a means to do this when I'm out in the field with literally a everyday carry radio and just my phone. And I thought that was impossible until I discovered a new feature. And I wish I could give credit to the person who mentioned that the WinLink on Android application actually has a mode to do that. So I kind of want to walk you through that process. So if you guys have a BTEC UV Pro, you probably have already paired it with your phone and that is step number one. And second thing is I'm on a packet frequency that I want to connect to on two meters and we're going to connect to my bulletin board system. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through the process assuming you've already paired your BTEC UV Pro to your Android system. You have to do this if you want to use the BTEC app anyhow. So we're going to go and open up WinLink on Android and really cool feature. So right at the top right hand area, you'll see this little section called Other. And right there at the bottom, I don't know how I missed this before, click on Terminals. And we have the ability to create a uh, terminal session. And we'll click on the bottom here and we'll do uh, Add. And under the terminal name, I'm going to put uh, just TTP BBS. That's my BBS system. TTP BBS. And then under protocol, you have a few different options. We want to use packet and uh, very powerful. And then under settings, really quite straightforward. Under the destination address, you want to put the call sign of the station you want to connect to along with their SSID. So my station behind me is KT7RUN-7. If I had to go through a Digipeter, I would click on VIA and enable the Digipeter option there and then put the Digipeter. Uh, I did test this the other day while in the Jeep. Uh, I do run a Digipeter from the Jeep and was able to go from this combo here through the Jeep back to my house at about 10 miles out. Uh, since we're in the shack, we don't need to do that. So the option is to be able to go through one or two Digipeters. The other important step is the TNC type, the terminal node controller type. And by default, we usually have this one set to audio if we're using something like the DigiRig Lite. Uh, in this case, since the BTEC UV Pro has a KISS TNC, we're going to select KISS. And then for the TNC configuration, assuming you're paired, you're going to go to connection type and select Bluetooth. And you should see the connection configuration information, uh, 38D2, that's the MAC address for this Bluetooth device. And that should be it. So really straightforward. I almost didn't want to do a video for this. And then I'm just going to go back to the main screen here and we're going to go ahead and for TTP BBS, we're going to hit the little play button at the bottom and hopefully we're able to connect and we're already connected. I could see uh, the little transmit here going on this radio here and we actually get the screen. So I know this may not sound like a big deal, especially if you guys don't understand what the whole bulletin board scene is, but this gives me the ability to be pretty much within a 20 mile radius if I have DigiPeters or probably about five miles from the house with just this HT to be able to access my BBS. And this is an area where I'm trying to get more users to come in, socialize the frequency and do a few other things. So just to see here, I've got a bunch of applications, but I want to go into the main bulletin board application. We'll hit enter. And it has a nice scrolling interface. And you can see now that we're connected to the BBS. And it says, hello, Gaston, latest message is 525. So we'll click on the terminal output there or input. Use LL for list the messages. And I just want to see the last three messages and we'll hit enter. And then uh, we can see there that I have a message from Kilo 9 Bravo Delta Hotel regarding the true SDX. Or that was a message I responded to him. So really interesting uh the reason why this was important for me and why i wanted to share this actually let me disconnect real quick we'll type in b to disconnect here is that up until this point i didn't think there was a terminal radio application specifically for the phone and now that it actually has been embedded for a link on android it opens up the possibility of me just carrying the device i already carry that has good battery life and just my radio no wires 
So I've been looking primarily at the possibility of a pure Linux phone, and I gotta tell you, I'm gonna call this one early and say this is a toy. I picked up a Pine Phone Beta, and I was able to get my communication suite MCOM tools to mostly run on it, but you're limited very much by battery life on this thing. Uh, the keyboard is a little bit uh, awkward to use. Uh, doing a lot of the terminal application stuff is difficult. Uh, but one thing that I was successful in doing, knowing I wanted to try to do the same thing, which I was successful, is I modified an application called Qt Term TCP to work for this style display. And the reason why that's significant, one, uh, I was able to connect to the BBS using uh, the AX25 stack on this phone. I was able to pair it with Bluetooth, and then I was able to run a Qt or Qt application to be able to do the same thing and modify it to work on a phone. The reason why this was significant for me is that everybody has been asking for a JSA call application that runs on the phone and it uses the same development framework. So if I wanted to push this a little bit further, which I don't know if I have time for, yeah, it is possible to redesign with probably minor changes to JSA call to run and work on uh, this display. Uh, just as an example, taking a look at Qterm TCP, uh, I changed the font size. Uh, by default, it had like a split screen. So if you were running the virtual keyboard, it got in the way. Uh, I basically had it start so that it was just full screen. I increased the size of the, uh, the scroll bar so that I could use my fat finger to scroll up and down. And I did a few other changes. So bottom line is I am very much interested in making communication something that you can every day carry in your pocket that doesn't require anything outside of an HT or your phone. And it looks like, especially with this win on WinLink on Android, uh, I can do just about everything. Uh, I'm gonna table the work that I'm doing with the uh, Pine Phone because it's just too much of a pain in the butt. In fact, I did dog food uh, the Pine Phone keyboard, which I don't believe they make anymore, uh, along with this guy, and I did challenge myself over the weekend to uh, post this and write up the whole article and all of my review experiences using just these two devices and then posting it on the bulletin board. And I will say it was not a pleasant experience. Uh, in fact, running something like a keyboard with a phone actually changes the user experience quite a bit. You go from uh, the nice uh, vertical orientation here where we're able to see everything nicely. We're able to uh, get the nice keyboard. When you go to the style of display, obviously you don't have the uh, full screen keyboard uh, there anymore, uh, but it introduces new challenges. Anyways, that's not the point of this video. The video, or the point of this video was just to show you, hey, if you have a need to get into a packet BBS station or maybe do packet point to point between two systems, take a look at WinLink on Android and the integration for the terminal. So I will say that's a win. In fact, this might be something interesting for uh, on the iOS side for the developer of Radio Ma Mail to maybe look at the same thing. All right, guys, uh, here's my coffee. I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.